In my previous video, I was really hating on the quantum computing master's degree because I really don't think it's a good decision for most people, especially if you are coming directly out of your undergraduate. I think for most people, the best thing to do is to get an engineering master's degree, focus on building a useful technical skill, and doing that at a university that actually has a quantum program so you can take quantum engineering and quantum computing classes and then do research in a quantum lab and get actual experience. The key thing here is you're going to actually get a useful engineering technical skill that's going to get you a job. Um, so there are some instances, I think, when it can make sense to do one of these quantum computing master's degrees. It's certainly not directly out of your undergraduate. That's, I think, kind of like I will 100% put my foot down and say, no, there's pretty much nobody who would benefit doing a quantum computing master's directly to their undergrad versus doing um, one of these. The only situation I could see that is if you absolutely need like a stepping stone to get into the United States to then do a PhD program or something like that. But I think it is highly costly. Look at this. They're, they're at least $50,000. Some of them even go up to like $90,000 in terms of tuition just to do one of these quantum computing master's degrees. And so unless you absolutely need to get into the United States, and you absolutely need it as a stepping stone to a PhD program, don't do it out of undergrad. But okay, who is the right kind of person to do one of these quantum computing master's degrees? Um, so if you don't know me, my name is Ari. I'm a quantum hardware engineer at IBM Quantum. Um, I have a master's degree, but a master's degree in engineering. And right now I work on scaling qubit control electronics. We can actually build a quantum computer that's going to be useful for this world. And... I want to help you guys not get scammed, and I want to help you guys build a career in quantum computing. The reason why is because I think we need really good people in order to actually build a quantum computer that is going to be useful enough. I don't think we have enough people right now. I also don't think we have the right people right now. We have good people, of course, but we need more of the right people to help us actually build these quantum computers that are going to be useful for the world. So with that, if you want to become a quantum engineer, don't do one of these quantum computing master's degrees, do a engineering master's degree. But okay, let's say you are already doing one. You already enrolled, maybe you're already slightly in, you're, you're in there for like a semester or a year or something like that. What should you do to make the most of it? Um, what I would do to make, make the most of it is make sure that you define an actual niche to build depth in. So in general, an undergraduate degree is a breadth focused type of degree. You're learning all sorts of different stuff. So for example, like a computer engineer or electrical engineer takes a bunch of circuits classes, but then they take a bunch of coding classes and then they take a bunch of embedded systems classes, but they also have to take some extra math and physics classes, right? So you're just learning a lot of stuff. A master's degree is not the place to continue doing that. A master's degree and a PhD for that matter too, is a place where you start to build depth, where you start to kind of find a technical niche and you can then build more and more deeper skills into that niche. And so if I was doing this Columbia MS quantum computing, I would try to go through all these electives and then create some sort of niche based on that. And so there's like a lot of like photonics courses. So you could create like a photonics niche effectively if you did like, let's see, fundamentals of photonics and then quantum and nonlinear photonics and then photonic integrated circuits. I'm hoping like this photonic integrated circuits is like somewhat more of an applied class um, that'll actually give you some skills you can use on a resume. I was just briefly looking at some of these courses. I think this is kind of a cool one. Um, this is basically seems like a simulation course where hopefully it says using state of the art uh, simulation software, hopefully you're using software that's like actually used in the industry. So potentially you could take this class and put this software on your resume that you actually know how to use it. And then that could help you get a job in some sort of, you know, quantum adjacent materials simulation. Like maybe you could use a simulation software to simulate something with like fabbing a superconducting payload. I don't really know. I just thought it was kind of a cool class, but by and large, like understanding um like especially monte carlo simulations like that kind of stuff is is useful to know and so this is kind of a cool class and you can kind of build a structure around practical and tangible skills i'm going to keep coming back to that you need a technical practical and tangible skill if you want to get a job in quantum computing in addition 
to a baseline level understanding. And so these that's what these kind of master's degrees give you is they force you to get that baseline understanding of quantum computing. They, they make you do the quantum information theory. They make him do the quantum mechanics. I don't personally think you need to take two semesters of quantum mechanics in order to work in quantum computing. Of course, you need to understand the basics of quantum mechanics and the basics of quantum computing, but I don't really think you need to waste your time on two semesters of it. But in any case, I, I see why some people do it. So if you are somebody who, let's say, is coming out of industry, you already have a computer science degree. You have already been working in industry for three years as a computer scientist writing code, and you want to pivot into quantum computing then I could see this master's degree making sense. Maybe you already made a bunch of money from your job. You want to do a career pivot. You just want some very basic roadmap that somebody's already made for you. You'll get the credentials. And then that could be your ticket to quantum computing because you're already, you've already developed this useful engineering skill. You could be a computer scientist. You could be an electrical engineer. You could be a lot of different stuff coming from industry. I could see that. If you're somebody who's been working in industry and then you do this quantum computing masters, you gain the basics of quantum physics and quantum computing here with these kind of basic lab courses and introductory theory courses. And then you kind of start building a more technical niche in addition to whatever technical skill, whether it be computer science or electrical engineering or whatever. That's, I think, kind of one of the only cases where I think it makes sense to do one of these quantum computing master's degrees. And Ultimately, I mean, the appeal to these is they just kind of give you a roadmap for you to follow. And I think that's what's like fools most people is they don't really know what to do in order to become a quantum engineer or to work in quantum uh, quantum computing. And so they just do one of these master's degrees because they think like, oh, okay, that's going to you know get me a job. But in the university that I went to, I went to the University of Wisconsin. I did a master's in electrical engineering. I didn't do it in the quantum computing master's, but my university has one of those quantum computing master's degrees and I knew all those people in those programs. And like, I think there was around 20 students, like only like one or two or three every year would go on to actually get a job. Most of them would then have to go do more research or they would get a PhD. So they would be out $50,000 and then, you know, one or two years of their life from doing that program. Um, and then just be starting at a PhD again. So I just don't think that's worth it. So I, I understand the appeal. If you don't have a roadmap and you don't really understand how you can, you know, get a job in quantum computing, doing one of these, you know, masters in quantum computing, it looks very appealing. But, you know, I make these videos to help basically my younger self who was struggling on their own to, you know, figure out all this stuff and get a job in quantum computing. I mean, the reason why I was able to get my job is because I had technical skills in electrical engineering. I was doing my bachelor's and my master's at a university with a quantum program. I was taking extra quantum courses, and then I did research in a quantum lab. That's why IBM hired me. That's why I got those IBM internships. That's why I have my IBM full-time job right now. But if you don't yet understand or like have a roadmap for you, then I've been building this basically private working group, private program to essentially help people who were kind of in my position who want to work in quantum computing, but don't really know how to build the roadmap for themselves. So I think before considering one of these quantum computing masters, you know, give that a shot. Click the top link in the description, give it a shot to try to build your roadmap without having to spend, you know, $50,000 or more. And you honestly might be better off doing that if you actually define kind of some sort of useful engineering skill that you can build. Pick a university that actually has a good program that fits your technical skill that you want to learn, but in addition has like the extra freedom to take the quantum classes and do research in quantum computing. I personally think that's a better way of doing it. But again, I, I know I'm hating really hard in the quantum computing masters, but I just wanted to emphasize like there are some instances when it makes sense. I'll recap. If you're an industry professional, you have already done a CS degree or you've already done um, an engineering degree and you've been working for a year or two in industry and you just want to pivot your career to quantum computing, this can make sense. If you have the extra money, I still think it's probably better to go back and get a master's in engineering. But in any case, if you want to do that, I can see where that makes sense. Or if you're an international student and you, you just absolutely need to come to the United States and this is the only program that you can get to, that's also another viable option, you know? And honestly, like if 50 grand 
leads to you and you know your children, the rest of your descendants eventually becoming US citizens and that's important to you, then I totally understand it, right? I totally understand it. I get why people do it. Um, but overall, I think for most people, especially if you're in the United States, don't do one of these. Don't do one of these. Just do a normal engineering master's at a university that has a quantum program, take quantum computing classes and quantum engineering classes and quantum physics classes on the side, and then get some sort of real tangible quantum experience. So with that, everyone, if you want to, you know, take your quantum computing and quantum engineering career seriously, click the top link in the description. Otherwise, these videos are always going to be free. I just want to help you guys out, um, help my younger self out, basically. And I want to get more people like me working in quantum computing. I want to get more quantum engineers out there. We need, we need you guys to make quantum computing a reality. So thanks for watching. Do good work, everyone. Click the top link in the description, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.